13 for Nassif, 3 for Salvato, and over 10,000 games of Arena uh, for each of them, which really, Marshall, it kind of starts to make me think of, uh, makes, me, makes me ask the question of how many games of Magic do you think these two players have played in their careers? If yeah, they've played 10,000 on Arena, and Arena's really been live for in a meaningful way for like a year, like maybe two, like what, what are we talking about? 100, 100,000, 200,000? Like yeah. that's outrageous. It could definitely be in that range. We have two grinders, of course, Nassif and Salvato both have streams as well, where they get a bunch of matches in. Matchup-wise, we have Rakdos Arcanist in the hands of Luis Salvato. He's really put this deck on the map for this tournament, has been doing quite well with it. John Sacrifice, of course, is the deck that Nassif has, and oof, a mulligan into Cauldron Familiar, Lovestruck Beast, and five lands. I wonder if he's going to go to five on this one. Yeah, it's tough to say. This is, uh, I mean, there's nothing to be thrilled about with this hand because this is also a matchup where Lovestruck Beast is not particularly good anyway. You know, it's a deck that can be easily chump blocked. There's a Bedevil in hand, so it can easily be killed. But you're playing into Death Age Young Pyromancer, so making a bunch of blockers and blocking everything else is easy. So it looks like Nassif is going to keep it. I'm a little surprised by that. But uh, if anyone's draw steps in the first two turns of this uh, of this day have been good, they're gabs, so... Yeah, you know, I think if I was him, I'd probably keep it too, given the way things have gone for the <laughs> for the day. Uh, just going to draw everything he needs right off the top of the old library here. Going to put a land back on the bottom. What about the hand for Salvato here? First things first, a thought seizer. Really kind of just take away the Lovestruck Beast and say, well, you don't have anything going, and this time no such luck for Nassif. It's a land off the top. Yeah, you see the you see the emotes there back and forth. Nice and thanks. And if I'm Salvato, so I'm a, I'm a much more, I don't know, Salvato's actually pretty expressive, but if I thought he was my opponent's held that hand, I'd be going, oh yeah, we are doing it. That's Your right. hand is horrible. That is a real bad hand there. And as you can see, Nassif down to just four lands left in hand for Luis Salvato. On the other hand, he's got Kroxa that he can play this turn. No, he's going to have to play Blood Crypt and say go. It looks like claim the firstborn off the top of the library there for Nassif. All he can really do, play a land, attack. Is he going to, I think he's thought about maybe playing for Gigant. It doesn't make a ton of sense to do so there. <laughs> so he's going to pass it back. And there's a land for Luis Salvato. Now what? Now I think we just wait here again because right now Salvato's hand's pretty weak. So you want to be able to play Cruxa and then do something with it. Either sacrifice it to Village Rites or sacrifice it to Spark Harvest. Especially mm. when you know your opponent's hand is just a couple of lands. I'm not saying he won't play it this turn, but I think it's more likely that I, I'm not, but I think it's more likely that he'll hold it uh, more than anything because there's just value to be had there with the village right. So he might want to fire off. I guess I'd be surprised. I guess I am. I will say it. I actually am surprised at doing it this way this turn as opposed to getting some value with either Spark Harvest or Village Rights. I really am. Yeah, the, the Spark Harvest, not, not so the, I guess much. not. Yeah, not the yeah. Spark Harvest because of Sorcery. That's on me. Right, but the Village Rights, that is kind of one of the core interactions for the whole deck is to put crooks on the battlefield and village rights it away the only thing stopping salvato was a tapped land there but i'm kind of with you w what is this opening the door for right what what do you need this extra mana for next turn that it's going to help you with interesting especially given cedric that you know that nasif's hand is trash right it's just he's going to discard a land and that's going to be that yeah, that's why I was a little bit surprised. Also, I think it's a different story if Salvato's underneath a lot of pressure. You know, mm -hmm. if Nassif is attacking for, you know, or if for four or five points of damage or something like that. But, like, it's just, a, I mean, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm going to regret it. It's just a cat. You know, like, it's not that sure. much going on. Now, the cat, clearly, it can get worse over the course of the game because of how much damage it can deal in combination with the oven and Mayhem Devil and everything else we've seen over the course of these three days thus far. But I, I am a little bit surprised I am at too. that turn. Yeah, it did, it did leave him keep up Bedevil for, for that turn if he wished, you know, maybe to kill an opposing Mayhem Devil. But again, with the information that Salvato had about the hand, you got to think that he's going to have to find something for this village rights, and thus far he hasn't. Last turn he paid for Luris, so he can cast it. But it's rarely the type of card that you want to uh, that you want to sacrifice to your village rights. You want to keep that thing on the battlefield. Yeah, I'm, I, I agree with you. But we are where we are now. So Croxa in the graveyard. It's something to work towards. There are two other cards in the graveyard in addition to Croxa, so three more to go. That's how I always kind of keep track of that with regards to escape, either when either when I'm playing with or against that style of card. So. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got you've got a village rights. That's another card. You know, spark harvest is another card. So you're not that far away from getting it back uh, and getting that six six onto the battlefield.
Well, Nassif paid for Jagantha last turn, so it could just cast it, but also drew a Mayhem Devil this turn, which of course has, you know, some nice implications. Of course, the, the missing piece of the puzzle here currently is, uh, no, I actually, I lied. I, or I'm going to stop myself from lying. There is a Phyrexian Tower down there for Nassif, so he does actually have a Sacrifice Outlet. Now, okay. that means that Salvato does get to get some value off of his village rights, but it does mean that that one of his really good late game cards, Luris, is in the graveyard now. Yeah, that one's that one's gonna be hanging out down there for a little while. So now That's with right. Mayhem Devil on the battlefield, croaks of the draw. So now how do we want to sequence off? Because we know one thing, Marshall, for sure. Mayhem Devil, uh, probably best not to let that stay on the battlefield for too long. First things first, I would think, would be to get rid of that devil. Yeah. And I gotta say, if that's the case, Nasif will sacrifice it to the tower, but like <laughs> This is one of the better, this is one of the best things that can happen to your Salvato. You're gonna get away from this devil with absolutely minimal damage. And he's gonna go for claim the firstborn. And look at this, he does actually have a spark harvest, but <laughs> kind of funny situation here. And look at Nassif think. And do I really wanna sack this to the tower? Cause interestingly, if he doesn't, Salvato has to use a spark harvest then to get rid of the, the Mayhem Devil. And that's pretty costly. Okay. Yeah, Nassif says, fine, you got me. Yep. Take your one point of damage and Salvato, perhaps a little bit of value there, but really that isn't the type of play that's gonna win in the game. He's gonna need more power than that. And here comes Croxo once again. That'll get rid of the Dragon Skull Summit and leave just Giganta the Wellspring in hand for Nassif. <laughs> and to see if in a little bit of an awkward position here as he does draw another spell. He's just going to go for the five mana Gigantha here. Rawr! Boom, the big elk hits the <laughs> battlefield. And hey, this is a two turn clock staring down Luis Salvato, so he does need to find some answers now. We know he's got Spark Harvest for Gigantha. Yeah, but Devil is. Oh, well, and he drew so... Claim for the turn as well. Yeah, this turn actually I think is going to be looking pretty, pretty, pretty good here for does Salvato. Look like that. Yeah, get his hand out of there, kill the Gigantha. Nice cauldron familiar. Seems good. Yeah, a lot of options. A lot of options. You can claim. You can bedevil your... You've got two red mana, three black. Your light total's uh, under some duress. 11's not so bad. But how do you want to do it? Ah, we've used a timeout now too, so Savato's deep in it. Yeah, he's really deep in the tank at this point, but th this is the good kind of deep in the tank because this is because Salvato has options, not because he's trying to figure out some obscure line to keep him alive for another turn. This is because he's trying to think, what's the most I can get here? And it looks like it's going to be Croxa. This one's actually coming out of the graveyard. Okay. So it's going to be on the battlefield, and perhaps he just says go. I mean, he does have a 6-6 six, six against a 5-5. Five, five. Good old-fashioned magic there. Yeah, I mean, what we could see here is something like, uh, you know, Croxa, I've got a 6-6 six, six on the battlefield. My battlefield is better than yours. Hope you peel a good card, which uh, one could argue Nassif did okay with the Woe Strider also creating a goat and then trying to play maybe more of a tempo game, which is bedevil your thing, attack you, you know, just try to kill you that way. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, at the end of the day, like you mentioned, it's a 6-6 six, six against a 5-5, five, five, so there ain't going to be no attacking. I like that line from Salvato. There was he a knew little... he could get... Go, Go ahead. ahead. I was just going to say, he knew he could get the last card out of hand for Nassif, so if that Croxa was not going to be on the battlefield next turn, it would have been from a top deck from Nassif. Now, <laughs> we've seen that playing that game against Nassif today is not the one you want to play, but it finally evened out and worked out for Salvato there. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. is you know, If Claim gets peeled there, Claim the Firstborn, uh, it's, uh, it's bad news <laughs> for Salvato, but uh, that's not the case, so we're okay. Yeah, now he's also drawn for the turn a Dreadhorde Arcanist, and this is... Well, it's probably the most powerful card in the deck, honestly. It's the engine. If he gets a Dreadhorde Arcanist going where he gets to keep looping village rights and, and you know, at some point thought seizes if they're relevant, those type of cards, claim fame, uh, claim the first ones, excuse me, they really, that card gets completely out of hand very, very quickly. And they can even 
use fame and cards like that to make its power high enough to get back cards like Bedevil. And it's very difficult to keep things in your hand or on the battlefield when that thing gets rolling. Totally agree. Hmm. Now, interesting card left on top here for Nassif and Witch's Oven with that scry. Um, well, I guess I can't say it's left on top yet. He's thinking about leaving that on top, mm -hmm. it looks like. He did. And this is this this is a crucial decision in this game. Uh, and Nassif has used one timeout, so he's still in the tankaroo over this one. You know, he's gone back and forth with that view browser button to analyze the battlefield and see what the rep, uh, kind of what the repercussions are for having this card uh, be the draw set for the next turn. But I still think he's in the tank over this one, trying to figure out if he should keep it or not. There okay. he goes. You're yep. right. He locked. He locked it in now. <laughs> It's a tough decision because you do have a he's got a pretty high ceiling on draw steps you know witch's oven is obviously great with the cat that's on the battlefield and that's why i said earlier in the game that it's just a cat might be a statement that i do regret and i'm starting to right now mm -hmm. um but you know when you when you're a deck that has collected company in it there's a lot of times you just want to be maximizing your ability to draw towards that card and then try, and try to double spike but instead this time we say witch's oven let's see what you can do to maybe buy me some more time uh with the cat to maybe find that collected company Salvato's going to pass the turn back. He does have Bedevil at the ready, so he can use that to kill, well, whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. Gigantha, of course, the biggest threat on the battlefield here is just a big old 5-5. Five -five. Woe Strider, though, is acting as a flexible and attacking sacrifice outlet, so we'll see what Salvato v values higher. He does not know that Nassif has the Witch's Oven in hand, but he does, of course, know about the Phyrexian Tower. Yep. Now, this one's interesting, too, because I like Nassif's play here. Uh, I'm going to attack first before I deploy the oven. Okay, that makes some sense. You want Because we know he scribed it to the top, but as you mentioned, Salvato doesn't know what the card is. So Bedevil may have been interested in blowing up a Witch's Oven as opposed to a Gigantha. So I like the right. sequencing here from Nassif, because that oven might be better than the actual Gigantha. It might be more impactful on the game, and the Bedevil may have wanted to kill that instead. So... Good sequencing for Nassif, and that land, I don't need you. He's going to sacrifice the uh, Gigantha to his Woe Strider. It was going to die anyway. Woe Strider does get in for three, and now we're starting to see that, that regret creep in on Cedric here, because now we're not quite to that point, but right now, take a look. Eight life here for Salvato, and we're going to see this um, Woe Strider get escaped. But, you know, eight life, a big Woe Strider on the battlefield and on Witch's Oven plus a cat. Mm, anything can happen. Yeah, this is a super cute play here from Nassif. He sacrifices the Woe Strider to Phyrexian Tower. Plenty of cards in the graveyard to escape it. So basically, he got those three points of damage in, and then he upgraded his Woe Strider from a 3 2 to a 5 4. Also brought an 0 1 goat along with it, and it's untapped if it needs to block. Really nice, sharp play there from Nassif. I'd expect nothing less from the Magic Hall of Famer. And now we head back over to Salvato, and you can see that facial expression up in that top left hand corner, Marshall not thrilled about where this game is at right he's deep in the tank now gabriel nasif playing beautifully and i have to say this game yeah he's drawn some cards but it has not been a top deck fest here for gabriel nasif he's really working well with the cards that he's been given and they haven't been his best stuff so i'm really impressed as i always am uh, by watching nasif play and work his way to a, at least a potentially winning position here so we're going to see a Spark Harvest, additional casting cost, sacrificing the Kroxa, targeting the Woe Strider. Curious if, curious if Nassif wants to respond now or wait, and if he does want to respond, how he wants to do, what he wants to do, excuse me. I'm curious too, because I have found myself in this position against this deck that Salvato's piloting and been dead. You know, because it's only a couple of Kruxa triggers before you're down to six, and if, if there's enough removal on the side for Salvato, you can find yourself getting lethally attacked very easily from this position. So Nassif decides he's just going to use the Witch's Oven to keep maximum blockers up. He's got the Familiar and the Goat. He does not have any mana for those food tokens. Those are going to have to stay, and he does not have a Familiar in his graveyard right now. So now we get to see fireworks here from Salvato. Yeah, so that's a claim. And now here, we're going to see the attack. And he's going to take out that Witch's Oven yep. with the Bedevil. This is non-lethal, though, so we're going to get to see more action. What can Gabriel Nassif find off the top of the library? Are there enough cards in the graveyard for him to get the Woe Strider back? 
This is a very close opening game here to see who's going to make it to the championship match. Yeah, that was an interesting turn. By my by my count there, Marsh, I think I just saw Claim on Kroxa. Uh, you know, you get your trigger there, and then Fame on the Dreaded Arcanist. And then, as you mentioned, the Bedevil being recast, killing the Witch's Oven. Uh, and now the Kitty Cat's going to come back with Sacrificing Food. Now there's a Midnight Reaper, so... Okay. On and on we go. Right. It just, just continues to stay interesting. Gabriel Nassif now does not have the Cauldron Familiar loop going. He can sacrifice it, but can't make food at the moment. But that question I asked going back to Nassif's turn is, are there enough cards in the graveyard for Woestrider to come back? And the answer is, yeah, there are. And we, I believe it was you and I, and, and perhaps it was me and Amy, the Amazonian. But when we watched Salvato earlier in this tournament, I remember very, very clearly watching one of his matches against a Witch's Oven deck where he put a huge, huge, huge priority on Bedeviling Witch's Oven. He does not want that yep. on the battlefield against anyone he's playing against, and it makes a lot of sense as to why that card in combination with the cat is a huge problem for his deck, uh, and that problem appears, at least for right now, to be solved. I think we're going to see a... Uh... Perhaps a spark harvest? No, he's got village rights here. We gotta do some digging, huh? Yep. He's just gonna let his Arcanist go to try to find some action. He finds Claim the Firstborn and a land. This is pretty good. This looks good. Claim the Firstborn, your Woe Strider. That's mm -hmm. gonna get you another young Pyromancer token. And then he can spark harvest away something else. So now we're managing the battlefield while going wide, while also Nassif doesn't have a Witch's Oven to just kind of do, doing these pings and these drains. So you said I, it. I, I like a lot of this. Yes. Th this, this is starting to really show the power of the deck that Luis Salvato brought to the tournament as it started to get sketchy for him in the middle part of the game, but he's pulling ahead now. Nassif, is, uh, he's got a Midnight Reaper in hand. That's fine, but he's not going to have much of a board after this turn. Mm-hmm. Also doing a really nice job here, Salvato, of just being able to go wide with Young Pyromancer. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Now we're going to sack a token to be able to control our draw step with this Will Strider that we've been gifted, keeping that card on top. He kept Claim Fame on top. That's going to be a doozy next turn. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And then Spark Harvest away the cat, it looks like. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, as the dust has settled here, all... Nassif has going is a Cauldron Familiar with a food and the Midnight Reaper in hand. Woe Strider back in the graveyard, but he just kind of ate up a bunch of his yard to get it back last turn, so he won't be able to escape it just yet. So nice. That's a really good turn for Salvato. It really was. Yeah. Really, really nice turn. Lots of like. So Nassif has a Dreadhorde Butcher on top of his library? That does nice. not seem like what you want at this point. Well, how impactful is this one? You know, because... Okay, so let's, mm. we're going to play that. And then my, I guess my question is, are we attacking? Or yeah, you know, are we I think we are. I think we are. Because I, I like what, where you're going. Block with a token, but then you lose your Pyromancer. Take mm -hmm. it, and it's like, that thing's going to be lethal very quickly. You could die to a whole lot more stuff. So, yeah, you know, that actually doesn't look too bad here, thanks to Salvato having just all one toughness creatures. Yeah, do you want to play the Reaper, too? I think you do. That's, that's actually pretty tough if you want to play the Reaper, though. Um, I mean, he's at nine, so I don't think his life total is low enough to be that, that scared. But at the same time, when Kroxa is involved and that thing comes at three point swings it with does. its triggers. That's the thing about claim to fame with Kroxa. I mean, it hits you for six, and that's yeah. before you even get to block. Nassif managing this beautifully, but it does start starting to feel like he's not going to be able to find his way out of this. I just don't know if he's supposed to attack like this. I think attacking with the Butcher's okay. Yeah, I, I like this. And, and is your Salvato, you... Okay, so you know Nassif has no cards in hand and just a Wolf Strider in the graveyard, so if you block here, your token dies, and that means your young Pyromancer is going to die too. So 
you're going to lose two things here. It looks like regardless of how you block, assuming you do block. Mm -hmm. If you block like this, technically your director butcher could go upstairs, but I find that to be unlikely. Right. Here's the Midnight Reaper. Yep. This is a big trigger here. What is it? It's just a land here for Nassif. So he's going to have to just settle for killing the two creatures, which is, of course, getting a little bit more into his graveyard here. But that Woe Strider still got another couple of cards in the yard before it can come back as well. Curious to see if Nassif plays his Dragon Skull Summit as well. He's tapped out, so the information that he's giving isn't really hugely different, but uh, he's going to keep it in hand and pass. But that was that claim to fame that Salvato had put on top of his library. And you're going to see uh, Gabriel Nassif fall to critical life here. He's going to be all the way down to two, potentially. Yeah, that's, so I, I thought the turn might be straightforward, which is escape Kroxa, assuming you have enough cards to do so, and then, you know, work in some claim fame shenanigans, all that mm. jazz. Uh Luis has slowed down a little bit here. He might have some different plans. Yeah, that's interesting, too. If he just wants to escape Crook so he can set up for next turn. Let's see what he decides to do with Claim. That's the first big decision that he's got. And he's okay. going to get back Dreadhorde Ooh. Arcanist here. So are we going to fame that? And if we do fame that, well, we got Spark Harvest down there. We got like, Firstborn down there. All right, so now we're escaping. We have nothing down there now. <laughs> right, so if he gets back the, cl the claim, the Firstborn, he still will have not quite a lethal attack next turn. So it is. he's just going to have to wait till next turn here to really put the screws to Gabriel Nassif. But from drawing a, a Cauldron Familiar, can he get him from five to zero? It feels unlikely, doesn't it? It feels unlikely to me. Now, no, with that escaping of the Kroxa, the entire graveyard's gone now for Salvato. So that means the Dreadhorde Arcanist has got nothing to work with. Now, if you're Nassif, oh, oh boy. Oh, oh my pressure. goodness uh, sakes. If you're Nassif, you're at four right now. And you got to make sure that you don't go to three. So... Familiar is going to bring you up to five. Now, remember, you're going to block something and go to four because of Midnight Reaper. And go to two because of the attack from Kroxa? I would go down or to one. One in yeah. that case? It's kind, of what I, it's kind of what I'm looking at uh, math-wise right now. So Okay. Well, well go so ahead. I was going to leave the Bone Crusher in hand and not take the Kroxa damage Correct. that way. Okay. He says, I just have a Woe Strider out instead. That's a good And draw. maybe I could go for a block. Oh, and look at this. Stitcher Supplier off the top could fuel the fire here for the Dreadhorde Arcanist. Does he find anything? Whammy. No, he does not. Okay. Okay, so we feel strong enough that we can attack. So Trigger, you're going to discard your Bone Crusher. And hey, you know, that's not three life loss for Gabriel yep. Nassif, but Salvato's like, hey, get rid of that thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, Salvato, I think, would prefer to be dealing three points of damage right now, but that's not happening. So... So right now, do we have Gabriel Nassif deciding if he can sacrifice something to Woe Strider, the cat, and then get a card off of Reaper and try to discard that if it's a different spell? <laughs> he decided not to. He needs the cat to block here, so he's just going to throw it in front. And he's oh. going to combine it with the Woe Strider. Wow. Remember, a lot of cards went out of the graveyard there for Salvato, though I will say the Stitcher Supplier did refill the graveyard to the tune of three cards, so that Crux is not actually that far from coming back still. Okay, so we didn't get that double lock. I would have been surprised if we did, because that would have been mm -hmm. two creatures dying. Uh, so this, and again, every creature that dies, you lose a little bit of life. So we just right. see the, the, the one block, Midnight Reaper on top, scrying it to the bottom, over on Tomb is a new card in hand. And now, oh boy, this gets scary, scary. Okay. There's another Dreadhorde Butcher, Nassif deciding if he'd like to keep that one on top of his library. How does he get out of this mess with Kruxa? Because Kruxa is applying such massive pressure to Nassif that even if he draws a spell, he can't play it because he doesn't want to take the, the hit from Kruxa because otherwise he's dead to his Reaper. If he keeps it in his hand and discards it, how does he make any forward ground here? All right, he's going to take it. Dreadhorde Butcher. Okay. Three blockers, three attackers. 
Remember, he just doesn't have the oven to to loop anything, right? He just can't. This game has been completely absurd. But does he have any way out at this point? Well, I don't. I, I actually don't know who's favored right now. Which well, is like a Nassif really weird thing to say. Win here, then Salvato does, right? Well, so no, a goat can block. Okay, correct. A goat can block, and Midnight Reaper is a non-token. So right. Oh, I like that. That's a nice magic card. Oh boy. I like that card. Yeah, I'd leave that on top. I want to that's figure out a collected what... company. Okay, so I can draw that card. Yeah, but unfortunately, Nassif <laughs> didn't play that land before, and now he has two shock lands in hand. So he's, he's still okay because he's got the Phyrexian Tower. So if okay. we if we tower, so if we use tower, sacrificing. Mid, okay, so my opponent's at four. Okay, if we use tower, sacrifice Midnight Reaper. Trigger you draw you go down the you go down to two, mm -hmm. you and then you've got two other mana without playing a land to play company. You want to keep your wolf rider on the battlefield so maybe that you can spike like uh, mayhem devil and something else. Like I'm not entirely sure what the best spike card for company. Like right now, but yeah, you can try you can try to hit right now in some meaningful way. And I think Reaper is probably the best thing to sacrifice. I guess you might want to yeah okay. So attacking first makes sense. Oh boy, this is super intense. Game number one between Luis Salvato and Gabriel Nassif. The game is still very much up in the air, but it is about as close as they get. And it's going to be a block Stitcher Supplier on Woe Strider. And does he feel that he needs to chump with the Dreadhorde Arcanist, or can yeah. he go down to one here? Yeah. Oh man, that's tough. Right. That is tough. This is a huge decision point, because if he does go to one... Then, uh, then a mayhem devil off of this collected company would just be lethal. Or a cauldron familiar. Cauldron familiar. Yeah. Boy, how can he go to one here? I, he doesn't know though about the company, right? No, he so, doesn't. He doesn't. All right, okay. he's going to go to one, and this is going to be a huge spin on a collected company now for Gabriel Nassif to try to pick up this first game. Can he get this done? First things first, Midnight Reaper. Off of Woe Strider, get that collected company in the hand. Okay. Oh my goodness sakes, this is massive. Oh, that's smart too by Gap because you can control the top of your deck a little bit better as opposed that's to the right. tower play that I recommended. And he did not need it, so here we go. I think you gotta set, you gotta sack the goat, I think, instead of the Woe Strider. You want the Woe Strider on the battlefield? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Here okay, we here go. we go. Collected company on the stack, and there's a Mayhem Devil Priest there and you go. another sacrifice outlet, and Gabriel Nassif finds the win off of Collected Company in an incredible game Ooh. one. Masterfully played there by Nassif, and he picks up the win, and even a Hall of Famer has to shake his head there and go, how did I get that one done? Oh. And I don't blame you, Luis Salvato. I'd run into the bathroom too. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. That's a game of magic right there. That was back and forth, up and down, and all around. My goodness. I have no idea what were the best lines of play there for both of those players? I mean, that's those decisions are incredibly difficult for the past five, six, seven turns. That was an incredibly, incredibly difficult game. But to see playing that one, Marshall, at one life? Incredible. Unbelievable play there from Gabriel Nassif navigating turn after turn. There was multiple times that it felt like uh, like Salvato had just gotten a grip on the game and that it may be falling apart for Nassif, yet instead it is Nassif who finds himself with the absolute narrowest of victories. Now both players have to calm down, take a deep breath, and focus in because Nassif, Nassif has to win one of the next two games. And uh, from Luis Salvato's seat, he knows how close that really was. He knows Nassif needed to hit off of that collected company, and he's going to have to shake that off and get back down to business. And I know Luis Salvato, and I know how he works mentally. Inside, that was a heartbreaker for him. But he knows he needs to focus in, and he can express his emotions after the match is over because now he doesn't have any wiggle room. One win for Nassif would put him in the championship match. Boy, that was an incredible game. That was really an all-timer between these two. Pretty sick.
This, yeah, this this Jun Sacrifice deck is definitely one of the hardest decks to play, uh, really in any format that I've commentated for quite a while. Certainly in Historic, it seems like it's the toughest to play. Sometimes it just comes together easy, and you're like, yeah, sure, you know, I hit the things I needed to hit, and you just have such raw power. But like in this game, that wasn't the case. This wasn't just one of those, oh, I drew two Mayhem Devils in a collected company, and I kind of got you. This played out much differently than that. There's Witches Oven to kick things off on turn one for Nassif. Turn two for Luis Salvato is going to be a young Pyromancer. He didn't have anything on turn one for himself. Yeah, but not a bad start here for Salvato. I will say that because now we're taking, I think, what's a little bit more of an aggressive slant of things. Luris is not the commander of this game. Luris is brought in, and we're going b -b 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 beat down. That's right. Two, three, four. Hazard at the fervent in hand out of the sideboard now for Salvato. A difficult permanent to deal with, and one that can pile on an incredible amount of damage in a very short period of time. That's not going to be the case here, as we're going to have to see. Uh, and also a little awkward village rights with the Hazaret going, but whatever. Uh, we're we're going to have to wait a couple of turns probably for Hazaret to actually start attacking. But in the meantime, it's Midnight Reaper on the battlefield here for Nassif. Interesting decision point now. I mean, L L Luris, think about, man, think about if Luris was around that last game we just watched. Talking about a completely oh, different game. Then, I mean, we're talking yeah. lifelink and we're talking a million different things. Now, Luris is just in the battlefield straight up right now. That's so right. I feel like it's got to be a force to trade. It's a tempting block for sure. Yeah. Luris on the battlefield is so annoying if you're going to plan to try to control it in any way. And as you can see, Nassif's game plan revolves around casting Collected Company, getting down Mayhem Devil, and doing some shenanigans there. So that is going to mean that he's going to need that to be off the board. Now, this is a big problem here. This is Hazaret the Fervent. Fortunately for Nassif, though, there was no way for Salvato to get Hazaret into the red zone that turn, so he gets one turn reprieve. But once Luis gets to untap with the Hazaret the Fervent, there could be a heck of a lot of damage coming in on Nassif in a real hurry. And it's a thought sees off the top of the library. A very good draw. And here we go. Collected Company, Dreadhorde Butcher, and Priest of the Forgotten Gods on the low end of hits there. For Nassif, that really isn't what he wanted to see. Yeah, you're going to get a meh from me on that one. Right, yeah, a meh. That's exactly what it was. At least it was two creatures. I mean, yes, he didn't hit, he didn't miss twice, so so yes. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, there's a higher ceiling there. You, you and I both know that, uh, and so do these two players, too. So I guess the one thing, as far as a positive is concerned, Dreadhard Butcher can manage uh, the young Pyromancer. So that's nice. Now, what's our long-term answer to old, uh, old Hazzy here? I don't know. Not seeing one at the moment. No Cauldron Familiar just yet. So here comes Spark Harvest now. Yep. Which is almost free, you know, creature-wise, since the young Pyromancer just replaces the thing that you sacrificed anyway. and play a land from your hand. And here comes Hazaret the Fervent, crunching into the red zone. Young Pyromancer is gonna get in as well. And yes. we're gonna see a chump block, which will kill the young Pyromancer. <clears throat> but still, that Hazaret the Fervent facing down a hand of four lands here from Nassif. This is a disaster for Gabriel Nassif. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Oof. Luis Salvato with this Oof. aggressive sideboard plan is about I I mean I think he's gonna win this game in the next couple of turns because Nasif just has nothing going. Yeah, he's on he's on air right now, Nasif. And those two cards that Zavato found are nice. There's Kruxa just to take away one of the four lands in hand here for Nasif. Your choice, sir? <laughs> but more importantly it's a loss of three life down to Ooh, ten i guess and it's a it's redraw that's it a, redraw, a redraw at least yeah an expensive one it looks like he's got enough cards in the yard now for woe strider to come back but this is not a good long-term game plan this will mm -hmm. simply stem the bleeding against the uh the hazard from slamming into the red zone turn after turn i like this hazard sideboard plan I like this go aggro sideboard plan because I, I do think that Salvato's you know able to 
to mix it up with, with regards to kind of going grindy like we saw in the last game. But but I do think that the Seath might be just a little better served at that than Salvato is. And if Luis thinks that that's the case, then you know what you can do? You can say I'm going beatdowns. And that's what he's doing this game. Uh, and it's looking pretty darn good, Marshall. Yeah, I think this one's just about in the books here. Gabriel Nassif really doesn't have many ways to come back from and lead this big. We're going to see two, uh, another Spark Harvest hit here to take out that Woe Strider. Uh, this is joining combat thanks to the uh, Dreadhorde Arcanist. And it's just going to leave a lowly goat token and a few food left behind. And uh, Luis Salvato slamming hard here and putting maximum pressure on Gabriel Nassif, who just really doesn't have any options at his disposal here. Once again, a completely empty board. And this is almost uh, insult to injury, mayhem devil, because a few turns ago, this could have really done work for him. But now it just seems like it's too late because of Hazaret. All right, so mayhem devil, you powerful, powerful, monstrous creature. What can we do? I do think you're right and probably it's too late. Now, what I'm thinking right now is if I cycle shelter thicket, Mm -hmm. Am I able, and, and I'm able to put together the combination of devil plus cat. Do mm. I get, do I get lucky and get, is that enough to buy me enough time? Because you, the thing that you did mention, I think is very important is that, you know, Hazard's obviously having a big impact, impact on this game, just attacking, but also the, the activated ability too is going to matter. So that's right. The activated ability is enough to kill Nassif, which is three activated abilities there. And that's assuming that he takes no other damage at all. All right, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go the route of sacrifice of food, gain a little bit of life, try to buy some more time that way. Yeah, this is a desperation mode now for Gabriel to see if he's being attacked once again. Here's a, a thought seize coming from Salvato, though that won't find anything useful in the Seif's hand. Just a couple of lands. Mm -hmm. And that's just more insurance there for Luis Salvato, really, at this point. He's got a mountain in his hand, so he could knock down another couple of life off of Gabriel and the Seif's life total. And I got to tell you here, Cedric. At this point, I'm looking down at the clock for Nassif. He's under uh, nine minutes. Uh -oh. And if he doesn't see a realistic way for himself to come back, now I may be missing one. He may have a couple of cards in, in mind that he could find that could actually get him back in, perhaps a sideboard card or something like that. But if he, you know, looks at this and says, this is not going to happen, he should probably oh. pack it in soon. Okay, well, okay, well we got to keep playing ain't. now. Now we're going to keep playing. That is a collected <laughs> company off the top of the library for Nassif. Perhaps that's the he was thinking of i was like right there with you with everything you were saying until that draw where it might be time to pack it up and move on to game number three but that draw can get him back into this game because cat plus devil or cat plus something can save him in this spot it actually can it can indefinitely block the hazard and get him enough of a life bump between the food and the cat triggers that hazard the fervent being activated a bunch of times may not be enough yeah huh Boy, he is going to have to hit, though, really well off this Collected Company. He did last time. Can he do it again? He's going to wait until combat to do anything. Okay. Interestingly, Luis Salvato plays a land here. Instead of maybe throwing it for the shock? Right. He had already six mana available. I don't know what the seventh does. But at any rate, once again, he's going to attack, and he's going to get... So continue to refill his hand. This time it's going to be village rights. Uh, the only thing I'll say about playing the seventh land there is that it allows you to shock plus Kroxa, assuming you have enough cards in your graveyard. Okay. Uh, escape the six six and then also throw two damage somewhere. But this, this is, is what matters. Yeah, collected company on the stack. It's priest uh, and a dreadhorde butcher, and I don't think that that's enough here. As as you mentioned before, Cedric, he really needed to see cat in there at some point. Now that Salvato knows that the attack is no longer exactly lethal, he can sacrifice the 1-1 one, one because there are going to be blocks, but uh, still very, very tough position here for Nassif as uh, he really needed to hit perfect off of that company. Now I think it's time to probably pack it in. I mean, maybe he'll want to see one more draw step, but I would be very concerned about a seven-minute clock if I was Gabriel Nassif, knowing that a potentially long game three awaits, especially given the way that we saw game one go. I mean, that took forever. I'm with you. 
I'm, I, I'm getting I'm getting scared for Nasi. I am because this is the kind of game where it's like I. There are like you know if he you know he sacrifices food token right okay I'm back up to mm-hmm. nine. Yep. And then I draw a company again, and it's like, okay, well, I'm I'm incentivized to keep playing. You know, Salvato has not shown that, like, hey, I've got a dominant, dominating enough presence on this game where, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, do this plus that, and it's like, okay, I'm just going to concede. Like, it's not – Salvato's advantage is not so great that it's appropriate to concede right now. Um, right. But the Seeds – I mean, we know this. He's got to get a move on. It's the perfect mix of – it just having found that collected company, oh, there's no. the yeah, Calder familiar. Go. All right. We're... <laughs> I, I wonder if he can get the Woe Strider here, too. Oh, we got to keep going. He can, he can win. He can win, it's, so we got to keep it going. It is not impossible, and I think he can even escape the Woe Strider. Yep. And that means that means that he can also activate the Priest. You know what? This is not over yet. Gabriel Nassif hanging on, hanging on hanging on and that cauldron familiar <laughs> you know because the other thing is the young pyromancer is gone now yep and that means that if he can get rid of the dread horde arcanist a priest activation would actually answer hazard at the fervent in which case gabriel nasif would be in fantastic shape that top deck was massive he <laughs> he might actually win this game now on the end step, you gotta throw you gotta throw some you gotta throw some stuff with hazard, right? Because you gotta keep your hand low, and also you wanna deal some damage. So down to right. six. What's the draw? Okay, that. Okay, so how does Bedevil work? Bedevil, the Bedevil for the Witch's Oven, right? We've seen how yeah. Blue Salvato plays. Yeah, good call. Really good call. He's he's targeted that artifact all tournament long. There Literally you go. every time. Yep. So a huge draw step there for him. Bedevil to kill the oven, and that's gonna force. You know, it's funny, it puts Gabriel Nassif right back into that mode that we were talking about before, where now maybe he has a little more work to do to actually get back fully ahead in the game, but he's got the tools to do it. Yep. Now, I think I, I think he's right to keep playing. I do. I mean, it's so close, but... Yeah. Now, oh, man. Oh, he's boy. got six minutes on his clock. If things fall away from him here, he still has the, the possibility of playing a full game you know, especially if things go well for him or you know, as it stands, if they go poorly, he, he could finish the game in time, no problem. So, yeah, I'm with you, Cedric. I, you know, I was mentioning before, hey, you got to start thinking about that clock. But there was never that one point where Nassif was like, I really have to concede here. It was always, well, if I hit collect, oh, there's collected company. And then, like, if I can find a cat, oh, I found the cat. Yep. And, you know, it's just that has cost him about three and a half minutes here. But those are three and a half minutes well spent because he could actually be in a position to win. Now, though, he does need to rebuild again and find another Witch's Oven or something along those lines. Yeah, this Priest activation looks good. Wolfstrider's the draw off of the Priest. It's going to take care of that Dreadheart Arcanist. So the claim the Firstborn has effectively been countered. The Hazarek can attack, and naturally you can block with the Cauldron Familiar. Then you can sacrifice the Cauldron Familiar to the tower and then gain three life by sacking food if you want. Looks like he doesn't mm-hmm. want to, so he can just bring the cat back with the sacrificing of food. Okay, sure. So now a little drain, 8 to 12. I mean, and now you actually have, you have an answer. Then there's a Witch's Oven, too, right off and the top of the library. And also you have an the answer. You have an answer to the, to the Hazarek with the, with the priest now. You do. The Woe Strider can come in, make a goat, activate the priest, and guess what? He's going to win this game. Gabriel Nassif is in the driver's seat. He is going to win this game. How in the world did he pull this off? This is an incredible comeback. He was just hanging on, hanging on. You know he was looking at the clock when you and I were talking about it, but he said, I've still got a chance. And now oh, we're done. Oh, come off on. the battlefield. Oh, and there's a main devil as well. And Gabriel Nassif can brag about how much time he's got left on the clock because he is in beautiful shape now. What a turn of events. Incredible play from Nassif for the duration of this match. I am in awe right now of how well he's playing. This is unbelievable. This is, we went from about three or four minutes ago to, I don't know if he should, what is his perfect draw steps? What can he do to get himself out of this situation? If one of those draw steps is something not effective, and remember, those companies weren't even that good, revealing Dreadhorde, Butcher, uh, and Priest of Forgotten Gods, because I would say that they have a higher ceiling for what they could have found, but he found, you know, he found a way to use those resources. Dreadhorde, Butcher was doing some nice trading with things, we're sacking food to gain life, we found an oven, or we lost our oven, we drew another oven, I mean... We went a million different ways there, and now Nassif has a huge advantage where it may have been appropriate to concede the game four or five minutes ago. 
unbelievable play here from Gabriel Nassif, and it's worked out for him. He kept himself in this game, and there it is, a concession. And, you know, I really got a lot of respect there for Luis Alvado because he gave him a good game, and he just sort of put his hands up and said, man, you played the heck out of that match. And it was Gabriel Nassif who picks up the win. An unbelievable victory. And I got to tell you, that was not just that game. It was also game one, lest we forget, that he found the win.